In this video, I'll go over some of the most common issues you'll come across when dealing with anchor points and how to solve them. Sometimes these issues can be solved with a little creativity or an expression, but just using After Effects native functionality. Other times, buying a tool, a script or extension is the best and easiest way to do what you want to do. If you don't already know what an anchor point is, go watch this video first. And to follow along with the examples I'll be going through in this video, you can download the project file. One of the most frustrating anchor point issues happens when you've already animated the position of the layer and you realize you need to move the anchor point. If you move the anchor point now, it will mess up your existing animation. So in theory, it's always a good idea to move your anchor point before you start animating, but if it's already too late for that, here are three ways to solve this problem. Just to make sure we're on the same page, I'm starting with this shape layer that's animated moving across the screen. But as you can see, the anchor point is off of the shape, but I want it to be in the bottom right corner so that when it finishes the animation, it can rotate up on that corner. So what I'm gonna do is first just duplicate this layer by hitting Command or Control D. And then I'm gonna recolor this duplicated layer just to help with the explanation, but you can skip this step. I'm also going to lock this duplicate. Now on the original layer, I'm going to go over one of the keyframes. So let's just do the last keyframe. And I'm gonna grab the pan behind tool by hitting Y on the keyboard. And then I'm going to click and drag to move the anchor point, but I'm gonna hold down Option or on Windows that'd be Alt. And this will actually move the layer instead of the anchor point. So I'm gonna move this into position. You can hold down Command or Control as well to snap it into place. Another way to achieve the same thing would be to hit A on the keyboard to bring up the anchor point property and then just adjust these values. And then once you get that into the right position, obviously the shape is gonna be in the wrong position. That's why we have the duplicate to know where the right position is, but we're gonna fix that. Instead of holding Command or Control to snap, you could also turn on snapping here, which I'm gonna turn on because it's helpful for the next step. Next, I'm gonna go where it says position and click that so it selects all the keyframes on this layer. And in order for this to work, your playhead has to be over one of the keyframes. And now I'm going to click and drag in the composition viewer to move that layer right over the duplicate. So now the animation is going to be in the right place with the anchor point in the right place. So I can just delete this duplicate. And now from here, I could set up the rotation animation that I wanted. The second solution is to use an expression. I'll walk you through it so you can get this working even if you know nothing about expressions. On the webpage for this tutorial, I have the expression that you can copy and paste, but I'll also explain how it works that way you can understand it and you might be able to figure out how to customize it if you want to do something slightly different. The expression is going to be on the position property, but you'll also need to know the value of the anchor point right now, so to see that in addition, you can hit Shift A. To start writing the expression, you just want to Option or Alt click on the stopwatch next to the position property. And then if you've copied the expression, you can just hit Command or Control V to paste. And let me just click out and then click back in so you can see the full thing. Normally when you move the anchor point after there's already a position keyframe set, it moves the position of the layer too. This expression calculates how much the position property needs to be adjusted to compensate for any adjustment on the anchor point so that the layer stays in place. Ver is short for variable, and this is just where you define something, you give it a name so that you can reuse that name kind of like a shorthand later on. So the first variable is just A, which I created the name A, standing for anchor point. And this is basically grabbing the address of this anchor point for this layer. And then for the next variable, a original, I'm defining the original value of the anchor point as it is right now, which is 00. zero. So I'm just putting in those numbers, 00. zero. But if yours is not at 00, zero right now, you need to put in whatever numbers you see here instead of 00. zero. And then the next part here is defining x and y for the position property based on the original anchor point and whatever anchor point you set once you start using this expression. So first it starts with A brackets of zero. So that's gonna grab the anchor point for this layer 
And since an anchor point has two numbers to it, x and y, we need to tell it which one we want. So brackets of zero means x, so this is taking the x value of the anchor point. And then I'm going to subtract the original anchor point, and the brackets of zero mean it's going to be the x value. And then I'm going to add the x value of the position property. So by adding plus value here, that means I'm going to be able to adjust this position so I could adjust the keyframes and move the layer and this expression and all the anchor point stuff that we're setting up will still work. And then for y, it's going to be the exact same thing, but instead of brackets of zero, we're using brackets of one, which will grab the y value. And then at the end, we just need brackets to define the two numbers, x and y, that are going to be the x and y positions. So I'll just click out of this expression, and now I can go in and use the pan behind tool and move this anchor point. But in order to move this, you need to hold down Option or Alt, that way it doesn't move the shape at the same time. So I'm going to move this into position, and you can also adjust the values here if that's easier. And then now I could set up my rotation animation so that it rotates from this bottom right corner. And again, if you wanted to change the position, you could do that too. And the expression and the anchor point and everything should still work. The last solution to move the anchor point once you've already animated the layer is probably the easiest. You can purchase an add-on tool. I personally use a tool called Motion, which has tons of other super useful features that I think make the price totally worth it for someone who uses After Effects as much as I do. With Motion, all you have to do is click on one of these location buttons, and even if your layer is already animated, it will move the anchor point without moving the layer and messing up the animation. I also came across this Pay What You Want script, which allows you to do something pretty similar. On the topic of tools, there are quite a few different options for scripts and extensions that give you more options for manipulating anchor points easily. These tools can save you a ton of time on things like moving the anchor point on multiple layers to the same relative position, or moving all the anchor points to the same place in the composition. Each tool has different features, and those examples just scratch the surface. I'll put links to some of the best tools for anchor points below. Another issue you might come across is that you need multiple anchor points. So for example, in this animation, the square rotates back on its bottom left corner in anticipation of moving to the right. Then as it moves to the right, it does one full revolution from the center. And then as it comes to a stop, it rotates up on its bottom right corner in an overshoot animation. So there are three different placements of the anchor point that are needed. Here's another example. As the shape rotates, the side that it lands on changes, so the anchor point that it squashes and stretches around changes. Anticipation, overshoot, and squash and stretch are principles of animation. If you want to learn more about the principles of animation for motion design, check out this class. In this example from my class Smooth Moves, I want the bowl to rotate back and forth as it bounces. So right here, it needs two different anchor points, one in the bottom right and one in the bottom left. I'll start with a fresh version where I've just soloed and shied everything but the bowl and the base. So the bowl is parented to the bowl base, and I already set up the Y position animation and the rotation, but you can see here that it's just going to bounce and then rotate and then just land flat and then land flat again. So right here, Instead of having it land flat, I want it to rotate on this bottom right corner. So it's going to be rotated this way, and then the other way, instead of flat, and then flat. So in order to do that, if I were to try to like keyframe the anchor point position to move the anchor point where I want it, you'll see that it moves the entire bowl. So then I would have to go in and also keyframe the X position to counter that, and that can get tedious and cause problems, so I'm going to do it a different way. And to do this, I'm going to use a null object. So go up to Layer, New, and then Null Object. 
And this is just an invisible layer that you can use to control other layers. So I'm gonna move this null object to right where I want the second anchor point to be. So right on the bowl in this bottom right corner. And then I'm going to name this rotation control. And now I need to parent the bowl base to the rotation control. And now right here, it's rotated up on the left. So this null needs to have a rotation of zero. And then as the bowl bounces and right now is bouncing flat, but I actually want it to be up on its bottom right corner. Now I want to rotate the null so that it will rotate the bowl up on its bottom right corner. And then here I want it to be flat again. So I'll just set this rotation back to zero. So now here's what it looks like. One quick tip for you is that if you have some easing values on a set of keyframes and you want that same easing value on another set of keyframes, what you can do is use this script called ease copy to copy the easing values and then paste the easing values onto the other set of keyframes. So now this will look even more in sync. In this example, I need the anchor point to be in three different places. So the bottom left corner, the center, and then the bottom right corner. Since this is a shape layer, there's actually two anchor points built in. So if we toggle down under transform, there's the normal anchor point, which is in the center. And then underneath contents under rectangle one, then transform rectangle one, there's this additional anchor point. And so I'm gonna start fresh and show you how you can use this additional anchor point property to create this effect where there's essentially three different anchor points. So starting in this fresh version, the only thing that I have set up is the position animation and the rotation where it does one revolution as it moves across the screen. But I still need to set up those additional anchor points in the bottom corners so that it can do the anticipation rotation at the beginning and then the overshoot rotation at the end. To set this up, first we need to toggle open the contents and then the rectangle and then transform rectangle. And here is an additional anchor point that is for just the shape. So remember, shape layers can have multiple different shapes within the one layer. And so this transform rectangle one are just transform properties that will affect only this shape. And when you look at the transform here, this is going to affect the entire layer. So if there were multiple shapes in this layer, it would affect all the shapes in the layer. So we can use this anchor point as an additional anchor point to rotate around. So the first thing to notice is that it's in the center of the shape. It's kind of a lighter anchor point than the main one if you select the entire layer. And I need to move this anchor point into the bottom left corner for the first rotation. To do that, you can use the pan behind tool and just drag it into the bottom left corner. You could also go in and adjust the values here if you know that your shape is a nice even number and you know that this should be a nice even number. Now, if you adjust the anchor point values here, it might move your entire shape. And when we move this anchor point later, it will move the entire shape. So in order to counteract that, what we can do is take this position property that's under transform rectangle one and parent it to this anchor point property. So now those numbers should turn red signaling that it's parented. And that way, whenever I move this anchor point, it won't move the shape. So I'm just gonna undo that so that the anchor point is where I want it in the bottom left. And then I can rotate using this rotation, the shape from that bottom left corner. And that way the rotation that I have for the shape in the center will still work. So when it starts moving to the right of the screen, I'm going to end the rotation animation. So just working backwards, let's rotate this up and then starting from zero. Now I'll just add some simple easy ease to this for now. So now that's working. Obviously the keyframes could be adjusted better in the graph editor, but for the sake of time, let's just move on and move this anchor point. So first I need to set a keyframe so that it stays in the right place for here. And then as it reaches this last position keyframe, for the shape to move across the screen. Now I want it to be able to rotate up on this bottom right corner. So I can just move this anchor point position 
So you can kind of see it moving along the bottom of the shape there. And I want this to be at 100. And I can set these two anchor point keyframes to be hold keyframes. That way they're not moving around during the animation. But as soon as it reaches this keyframe, it'll move the anchor point into place in the bottom right corner. So it's just like switching from bottom left. And as soon as it reaches this keyframe, it moves it to the bottom right, which I know can be hard to see. And then now I can keyframe this rotation property to rotate it up the other direction. So now it looks like this. And obviously I could do a much better job of adjusting the keyframes if I went into the graph editor, but I think you get the point. Now, what if you wanted to achieve a similar effect, but you're not using a shape layer? Let me show you how to set up using multiple anchor points when you're not using shape layers by showing you this example with the squash and stretch animation. So I'm gonna go over into this fresh version where I don't have the squash and stretch animation set up, but I do have all of the bouncing animation already set up. So if you toggle this layer open, you just have these normal transform properties. So there's only this one anchor point and that's rotating it from the center so that it can kind of bounce up and rotate. And what I need to do is have multiple anchor points where on each edge that it lands on, so right here, this dark edge on the bottom of that, there needs to be an anchor point so it can squash down here. And then also when it lands the second time, I need to have an anchor point here so it can squash down here. So that's a second anchor point. And then here, a third anchor point on this lighter edge, and then it just bounces without rotating. So I need three different anchor points, but as you can see, I only have one and this one's already in use. So what you can do is go to the effects and presets panel and just search for transform. And right here, it's gonna be underneath distort. You want this transform effect and you wanna apply that to your layer. So this is adding a whole new set of transform properties to this layer, similar to how we had a second set of transform properties on our shape layer. And this should bring up the properties in your effect controls panel, but you can also see the same exact thing in the timeline. So from here, I can use this additional anchor point to switch up which edge the anchor point is on. So starting on this first bounce, I need the anchor point to be down here. You can use this button to get this crosshatch where you can easily position the anchor point. So I'm gonna move it into place where I want it, but notice how that moves the entire shape. So what I need to do to counteract that is similar to what we did with the shape layer example. I'm gonna take this position property under the transform effect and I'm gonna parent it to the anchor point property. And that way, whenever I move the anchor point, it won't shift the position. So I can set a keyframe for the anchor point to be here and then moving along when it moves and bounces here, I need to move the anchor point. So I'll just take this anchor point and drag it into place. And that should set another keyframe. And then moving along here, I'm gonna move the anchor point to this bottom edge. And I can set all of these to hold keyframes. And now if we play back the animation, nothing has changed because I still need to go in and add that squash and stretch animation. I'm not gonna go through every step of creating this squash and stretch animation because I want this tutorial to be focused on anchor points and I cover squash and stretch in my principles of animation class. But the first thing that you'll need to do is turn off uniform scale and then you can keyframe the scale height and width. So for example, here, when you want this to be the most squashed, you could just animate the width wider and the height a little smaller and do that for every bounce. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy animating.